I'm Coyote Peterson. This is Julia. And this is Naya. And today we're exploring in their backyard looking for sea creatures. Anything? Should I put my hand in there? Yeah. Ooh, what if something lights me? On this episode of Coyote's Backyard, I will be exploring alongside Julia and her best friend, Naya. They are two of the Brave Wilderness Channel's biggest fans, and over the course of the past year, have sent many stories and pictures of their adventures together. Julia and Naya live on Orcas Island, located within the San Juan Island chain of Washington State. This was the perfect place to film an episode of Coyote's Backyard. So the stars aligned, and before I knew it, we were getting ready for an epic tide pool adventure. All right, girls, I'm gonna get on the boat first, and then I will help you get down here. Sound good? Yeah, you go first. Okay. All right, Julia, you wanna come down? I got your hand there. Go ahead, step right down on there. Okay, come on this side. Sit right up front with me. Naya, you all set? There we go. Got it. Are you excited to go on the adventure today? Are you excited to go on the adventure? Yeah. Are we going to catch lots of cool creatures? Yeah. All right. Crew ready? Ready. I want to get to the beach we can look for alligator lizards too. Are there alligator lizards out there? Uh-huh. What? what do you think, Naya? Are we going to find some alligator lizards? Yeah, I love them. <laughs> All right. Lizards and sea creatures. Here we go. Bye, Mario. Bye, Mario. We'll see you on the island. All right, guys, we have left the shore. We're on our way to Sea Creature Island. Julia, are you excited? Mm -hmm. You got tucked down there in your life jacket like a little turtle. And Naya, I think you're ready to go, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna hold on to you guys tight. We're gonna head out across these waves and make it to the other side. Julia's dad has been taking her to explore tide pools since before she could even walk. And now that she's a little older, all of five and a half years, they often frequent the uninhabited Doe Island. At low tide, this is the perfect place to find marine creatures hidden amongst the intertidal pools. So we slowly ferried over in a small boat and safely made our way to the shore. All right, let's do this. Let's get up on the dry ground. Real careful. Careful, Julia. Here you go, Naya. Be real careful on that kelp. Let's get onto the dry ground and wait for the cameras. Okay, so right now, Julia and Naya are fast at work searching out the typhoons. We've got the rest of the crew coming over on a boat, and it's almost impossible to contain these two. As soon as they see a tide pool, they're immediately catching things. So far, we've found kelp crabs and sculpins. I gotta catch up with them. They're gonna be leading this entire expedition. Wait for me, guys! Oh! Oh! Guys, I found something! What is that? Huge fish! Julia! Fish, Julia. Got it. Right there. there it is. Got it. So Julia, what is this? A clingfish. That's a clingfish. Now the reason they're called clingfish is I'm gonna flip it over like this. Look at the underside there, Mark. It looks like a big bullfrog tadpole, Whoa. but it's got that big suction cup on its underside. Now they use that to actually hang on to other fish, right? Mm -hmm. It can hang on to other fish and catch a free ride. It almost looks like a bullfrog tadpole. Have you ever seen a bullfrog tadpole before? Mm -hmm. Well, they look just like this, but they don't have that distinct suction cup on the underside. All right, should we put this little guy back under his rock? Right there. All right. Cool. The journey continues. All right, we're gonna put this rock right back where it was and let's see what else we can find. Good job running the camera there, Julia. She's a natural. Okay, that's you. Here, you hold the net and I'll get him in the net, okay? Watch your fingers, watch your fingers. Got it. Give him the net. There we go, that's a big one. It's a rock prickleback fish right there. Be careful. Let's take that up to your little tide pool, okay? Yeah. Well, now we have some prickleback fish. <laughs> and what did you find? Look at that! Nice, got a tiny sea star. Well, we have spent our entire morning adventuring around in these tide pools, and we've come across a whole bunch of different cool marine creatures. But right now, we're gonna get three of them up close for the cameras. Are you ready for this? 
How about you, Naya? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna look at is called a chitin. I'm gonna grab it, it's right here. We put it in this pocket of water. Come here, big guy. Oh, look at this. It's really heavy. It is heavy. Look at this. All right, it is like a creature from another planet. Naya, have you ever seen something like this before? You think we could put it on your head? <laughs> no. You wanna see what happens if it suctions onto my face? Ah! You know what? Nothing's happening. It's just kind of like a big suction cup. And you can see that. You see how it's kind of curling up into a ball? It's doing that as a defense. Now, touch the back of it. What's it feel like? Like rock, right? It's very rough. It's very rugged. It almost feels like rhinoceros skin. You know what? Pet the back of that. Does that feel like a rhinoceros? Yeah. Have you ever pet a rhinoceros before? No. Well, we're gonna guess that this feels like rhinoceros skin. And on the inside, it has this big foot. And that's how it suctions onto rocks. And it just kind of moves along eating algae and kelp. You wanna put your finger in there, see if it bites? No, it doesn't bite, does it? Julia, you do. Put your finger in there, tell me if it bites. No, it doesn't bite. Nothing, totally safe to handle. All right, I'm gonna put this back into the pocket of water. You guys wanna see what's in that net over there? No. All right, we're gonna see what is inside I'm of the net. I'll hold the you want to hold the big guy? All right, yeah. put your little net down. Oh boy, come here, Naya, check this out. All right, I'm gonna slowly kind of reveal what's in the net. Julia, can you get the big one? This is a rock prickleback fish. Hold on, he's kind of stuck in the net there. Very slippy. Now, it looks like an eel. You gotta hold it, there you go, two hands. It looks like an eel, but it's actually a fish. Did you know that? Yeah. And the way you can identify it as such Mark, if you zoom in there, you can see all that stripe patterning on the side of the face, right there by the gills. That's how you identify oh, he's it. Trying to bite me. He's trying to bite you. You want me to hold on to it? Uh, I got a bit. Yeah, let me see for a second here. Here, put your hand flat. There we go. Naya's gonna help me hold it. There you go. Can you zoom in on the side of its face there? You wanna know something pretty cool? These fish can breathe out of water. Did you know that? But they do have to go back into the water eventually, and then they will swim off into the water. And these can grow to be about three feet in length. Did you know that? That's like as long as you are tall, three feet. How tall are you? That tall? Yeah, this can grow to be about as long as you are tall. Isn't that crazy? Pretty wild, huh? All right, you also have a little sculpin in there, right? I'm gonna put the prickle back down into the water in the net, and let's hold up this little sculpin. Can I see? Put it in my hand there. Now this, Julia, this is your favorite fish, right? Yes. The sculpin, and aren't they cute? Look at its little face. And you know what they have on the side of their gills? Little tiny hooks, and you know what they use those for? That's for defense. In case a predator tries to eat them, they'll puff those out, and they're very spiky. So if something tries to bite it, it's gonna get like a spike right in its mouth. You ever tried to eat a sculpin before? Yeah, that's what I would say. We don't eat sculpins, right? No, nope. he's a little teeny tiny one. All right, you wanna put the sculpin back down into the net there? Julia, are you ready for the spider crab? Eee, look at that! Have you ever seen a spider crab before? Put your little finger on his back there and pet him. What does he feel like? He's fuzzy. Pet that crab. Whoa. Fuzzy crab, He's right? Like a short haired cat. Like a short haired cat. That's a great description. Now, we're not sure exactly what variety of spider crab this is, so we'll have to look it up. As it turns out, this is actually a helmet crab, a species that is often misidentified as either a kelp or a spider crab, and which can often be found foraging amongst eelgrass or kelp beds. That's what we call facts from a field guide. Now look at this, it's not even trying to pinch me. It has very small pinchers up front, and they use those pinchers to pull apart all of the plant material that they then feed into their mouths. Look at those claws up front there, Mark. Zoom in on those. Pretty crazy looking, isn't it? You wanna put your hand out here? Put your hand out, and let's let it walk. You see that? Look at that, look how the legs on this side are longer than the legs on that side. Why is that? It could be possible that this crab lost some legs at one point in time, because did you guys know that crabs can grow their legs back? Now, Julie, if your leg falls off, is it gonna grow back? Probably not. Naya, if your leg falls off, is it gonna grow back? No, I don't have that power either, but all crabs have the ability to drop their legs, which means they can pop off, and then after a little while, they grow back. All right, you guys can be super brave, right? You're brave members of the Coyote Pack, aren't you? Okay, so to test your bravery, we're going to see if you can hold the spider crab. Are you ready? All right, we're gonna go with Julia first. Ready, keep those hands flat. Oh, I hope it doesn't pinch you. There you go, that's you holding a little fuzzy spider crab. Whoa. Pretty cool, right? So brave. Naya, are you ready? 
All right, here we go. Spider crab. Ooh, there it is. She's doing it. That's no problem, right? Oh wait, Spider Julia. Julia, where are you going? All right, let's dunk it down in the water because you know they breathe using their gills and we have to put it underwater for a little bit. There you go, little crab. See that, it's just curled up in a ball. Well, I think Naya gets to name the crab since she, she's the last one to hold it. Would you like to name the spider crab? I'm gonna name him Fuzzy. Fuzzy! Fuzzy the spider crab. Coyote, I think you, uh, you lost your team. I did lose my team. Mario was up there exploring and he found some alligator lizards, so the girls left me to release all of these marine creatures. But it was one epic day exploring here on Doe Island. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Animals are present in almost every backyard around the world. And to find them, you just have to know where to look. Exploring alongside Julia and Naya was an absolute blast. And it's young, adventurous members of the coyote pack like the two of them who truly bring a smile to my face, knowing that they have a genuine love and admiration for the natural world. This is so cool. The official Brave Adventures tour poster. We're going on tour? That's right, guys. We're hitting the road to meet members of the Coyote Pack. That's awesome. So what are we doing on tour, Coyote? Oh, it's going to be incredible. We'll be talking about animals, the adventures we've been on and the locations we visited, some exclusive and funny behind the scenes stories, plus taking pictures, signing autographs, and most importantly, meeting members of the pack in person. Man, that sounds awesome. So where is this tour going? We'll be traveling down the East Coast from New York to Florida, and there's a good chance that we will be visiting your city. Awesome. So Coyote, I'm guessing since this is an actual tour, there's gonna need to be actual tickets. Ah yes, the tickets. There definitely are tickets. And the good news is they're on sale right now, both general admission and VIP. VIP is extremely exclusive and there's a very limited number, but what it gets you is an autographed copy of the Brave Adventures book, plus a hangout before the show with me and the crew. Exclusive hangout time with me, Mark, and Mario. How awesome is that? So what about general admission? Can you still buy a book? Oh yeah, books are definitely gonna be for sale. And actually, I have one of the first prints with me right here. You guys wanna see it? Oh, I think we should check that out. Yeah, all right, let's take a look inside at some of the featured animals and the illustrations. Are you ready? Cool, let's take a look. What is it? Oh my gosh, Mark. What? It's a golden adventure ticket. A golden what? A golden adventure ticket. What's that? This is an exclusive invite to a very special event that we'll be throwing next spring. Awesome, and how do you get a ticket? Now, the only way to find one of these golden adventure tickets is that they will be hidden within the pages of the Brave Adventures books that we'll be selling while we're on tour. Oh, nice, so tell me about the event that you get to go to. I don't know guys, it's pretty top secret. But remember, the only way to find one of these Golden Adventure tickets is to actually be at one of the shows. Now, tickets are on sale right now. And to get your tickets, all you have to do is click on this link right up here or the link in the video description below. Remember, tickets are limited and they're selling quickly, so make sure to get yours today before the shows sell out. Woo! I'm so incredibly excited to finally get on the road and meet so many of the members of the pack in person. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the road, guys. If you are excited for the tour, then we know you are excited to get the Brave Adventures book. Make sure to go back and watch our famous clickbait book announcement video where you can pre-order your copy today. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure. <laughs>